Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. If you've never attended one of these events before, first of all, welcome. My name is Kendall Fisher, and I am the Senior Media Production Manager here at NetSuite, as well as our resident on-air host. Today, we are concluding our Pride Month celebrations with Beekman 1802 founders, Brent Ridge and Josh Kilmer Purcell. For those of you who haven't heard of Beekman 1802, it is the world's biggest goat milk skincare company with a mission to spread kindness. It started though with humble beginnings out of necessity during the 2008 recession before growing the cult following it has today. We had Brent and Josh on a little a little over a year ago to discuss that journey, and we'll we'll still hit on a little bit, bit of that to catch up with our new viewers joining us today. But we're also going to hear about some of their exciting new initiatives and what they've been up to over the past year. And of course, we're going to dive into Pride, the topic at hand today, what it means to them as LGBTQ plus founders, how they incorporate that into everything they do with Beekman 1802, and why community and inclusion really has always been and will always be at the core of their success. We will also be opening it up to a live Q&A with Brent and Josh at the end of the event, so make sure you use the comments to ask any question you may have. And in the interim, make sure you also drop a hello and tell us where you're tuning in from. I'll do my best to shout out to, to as many of you as I possibly can throughout the, today's event. And again, I'll get to as many of your questions at the end with Josh and Brent as well. So now, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Beekman 1802 founders, Brent Ridge and Josh Kilmer Purcell. Hi, Brent and Josh. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Hi Kendall. Kendall. Great to be with you again. Thanks for talking to us again. Oh, it, it is so exciting to have you back. Like I said, it's been just over a year um, since we had you on last. So really quick, can you give us a little recap of what you two have been up to over at Beekman 1802 over the past year? Oh, my goodness. Oh my how, how we've spent our year. Yeah. <laughs> Here well. you well, since we last chatted, we um, took on our first major investor. Um, we, we brought in Eurasio, um, which is an amazing private equity firm, and um, um, really to set us up for future growth. Um, we fur further expanded into Ulta, um, a couple hundred new doors in Ulta. We opened up our first kindness shop in the brand new LaGuardia terminal uh, for Delta, and that just happened a couple of weeks ago. And we launched a major new partnership with Netflix and Bridgerton. Oh my gosh. Well, that is all so exciting. I happen to have seen some of the uh, some of the stuff happening in Ulta. So I was really excited. That always brings me so much joy whenever I see you guys anywhere. And I can't wait to see the kindness shop in LaGuardia. That's awesome. Um, we are going to dive into some of that um, in a bit. But first, we are here to celebrate Pride. Now, last week, we shared a video of a few of our employees sharing what pride means to them and defining it in their own words. So I thought that might be a really nice place to start with you two. What does pride mean to Josh and Brent? Well, pride means to me being grateful for all that has been accomplished in my lifetime. Pride meant a very different thing to me, you know, 30 something years ago when I went to my very first pride. Um, so first and foremost, I'm, I'm grateful. And uh, secondly, pride today means sharing the privilege that we've gained over the years. And, and we have gained a lot in marriage equality and um, you know, medical equality, employment uh, protections, all these things we've gained. Now it's time to share, spend that privilege that we've earned and spend it with, with our allies, particularly right now, um, our, our our female allies around the country and their, and their reproductive rights. So yeah. it's become bigger to me than, than it's ever been before. And uh, I agree with everything Josh said. And I also think that, um, you know, pride is about living your life to its fullest potential. Um, and I think until you are proud of every aspect of who you are, you can't live your life to its fullest potential. So um, that's why pride is so important. I love that. Um, now, I know you, you said um, that this has kind of changed over the past 30 years for you, but when you're looking back on kind of the founding story and really the mission of Beekman 1802, 
um, which you guys started in, in 2008, right? How, mm -hmm. how do those values that you guys just said still really play a role in that founding story and that mission? Well, for those of you who are brand new to um, learning about Beekman 1802, we are a company that um, we say has two main ingredients, goat milk and kindness. Mm -hmm. And we started our company from an original act of kindness when we had lost our jobs in the recession of 2008. A neighboring farmer was losing his farm and asked if he could bring his goats to our property to graze. And we said yes. And we said that was the original act of kindness that started the company. And um, it's really that act of kindness that gets filtered through everything that we do as a company, with how we treat our employees, how we create products, how we communicate the brand ethos in every single product that we create is kindness, kindness to yourself, kindness to the community, kindness to the planet. Um, it's in everything that we do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it really is an incredible story especially like you said, coming out of the 2008 recession. Um, data actually shows that tumultuous times or times of economic volatility, like actually the times we're in right now, really actually spark innovation. So what advice can you share with the budding entrepreneurs who might be, out of, who might be born out of this era right now? Mm. I mean, this is the time to let your creativity shine. I mean, that you, you said it uh, precisely, times of uh, chaos, times of tumult, that's when creative problem solving comes to bear. And, um, and that's when creative people rise to the top. And we started our company, as you said, in the first recession. And, you know, anybody, if you had told somebody that we were going to launch a, a premium luxury skincare company during a recession, you know, they would have said, you're crazy. <laughs> um, but we went about it in a very different way. We went about it based on, uh, you know, our farm, based on our lives, based on kindness. And, and it succeeded because it was doing just something different than everybody else was. So that was what I would say in uncertain times, do something different. Yeah. And I think, you know, we always say that desperation is the best motivation. And sometimes when you have the luxury of having all of the resources that you could need, particularly monetarily, monetary resources, you don't always make the truly smartest decision uh, and choices. But as you have to be uh, more deliberate in the choices that you make and more creative in how you deploy your resources, actually better things come out of having that desperation for resources. Yeah. Well, and I think that part of your mission, that, that second ingredient, the kindness part, I think kindness comes out of these times, right? We have to be there for each other. And um, I think that was that's also a huge part of your story and a reason why you are so successful. Um, and for those entrepreneurs that are kind of, you know, looking at that today, it is one thing to have a good idea, right? But in these tumultuous times, knowing that idea can become an actual business and having the confidence to make that happen is another. Like even even if desperation is, you know, kind of at the core of that and really driving you, how do you still find how do you find that confidence to know that the business is going to succeed. And, and I'll ask you that by asking you when or how did you realize Beekman could become a successful business and what, what steps did you take to really, you know, kind of get it off the ground? We knew it could be a successful business when we sold our very first bar of soap. And I think that is the advice for anybody starting now. Because we're in, you know, we may be in a recession, economically challenged times, start smaller. You know, don't, it's not the time where people are throwing cash around and you can you can start your idea with ten million dollars of free money. Start small. Yeah. So, and and you'll know you'll get that confidence by seeing that the core of your idea, the very smallest part, selling a bar of soap or whatever you're doing, that first yeah. thing, if that works, then you've got the confidence to know that you can grow it. And use the time to build your community. Um, that's exactly what we did when we started in 2008, um, is that we really built a strong foundation to the company, um, really stay in personal contact with every single neighbor. We call all of our customers neighbors, mm -hmm. uh, really building that strong foundation so that then as the economy kicks back, as it always does, um, you have that really strong foundation on which to build and to scale. I love that. Um, that is a question that I have for you in a little bit. I want to I want to keep the story going, though, really quick um, before I get to that community factor, which is so big. Um, what would you say are the two or three milestones that really laid the foundation for Beekman 1802 to become the brand that it is today? Mm -hmm. 
Well, I mean, the very first, of course, was that that first act of kindness and, and working with our neighbors and realizing that the brand was was based on building community because then we realized that's what we needed to do was build a community. That was step one. And then I would say the second thing for us was, um, you know, we w once we started making that original bar of soap and we were getting feedback from neighbors about how it was really impacting their skin. Um, and then I put my doctor's hat back on being you know, a, a, a former physician and really tried to research why had goat milk been such a, um, uh, a treatment for sensitive skin for so many thousands of years. And that discovery that goat milk had the same pH as human skin. So when you cleansed with it, it didn't disturb the acid mantle and the barrier of the skin. That was a major milestone. And then even building off of that, once we discovered how goat milk was um, serving as a powerful prebiotic to the microbiome of the skin and, and um, how those, the pH of the barrier and the microbiome of the skin were related, those were two kind of product milestones. And then not to, um, uh, to, to, uh, to, to play into Nest Week too much, but honestly, integ integrating Nest Week, which we only did just over a year ago into our company, yeah. Yeah really was a huge milestone for us because up to that point we had been this company that had been growing by fits and starts we had inventory sitting all over a warehouse we sometimes didn't have visibility into it um you know just trying to get systems in place so that we could continue to grow um was a huge milestone for us so where is beekman 1802 today like you you had you telling us like you've gotten those big kind of pillars. Um, I love that you said that about NetSuite and I, and I want to hear how, how have we helped you in continuing to grow? Where are you guys at today? Well, uh, today we are the uh, number one beauty brand that crosses over QVC and HSN. Um, we are uh, in Ulta Beauty. We were their number one clean beauty launch um, during the pandemic. Um, and of course, we have our own e-commerce platform, Beekman1802.com. We have our original flagship Beekman1802 kindness shop in our town of Sharon Springs, New York. And as we said earlier, we just opened up our kindness shop location in the new Delta Terminal at LaGuardia. And yeah, I would, you know, and you ask, you know, how has NetSuite helped and what have we done? Like, I think the most surprising thing for me I mean, I think we all know what it was going to do and help us set up. And, you know, like this, I mean, that's that's why you exist. Yeah. But the most surprising thing for me was as we've grown, we've grown our team a great deal as well. And being able to hire and recruit people and say, you don't have to come in and clean something up before you can start your job. Like you come yeah. in and it's all there for you. And and a lot of them are familiar with NetSuite. It was like, you, we just hire people and they can go. It's like, yeah. <laughs> that's a big un, unforeseen bonus. Yeah, they're hired for the skills that you actually hired them for rather than some of that other stuff. That's exactly. amazing. Um, okay, but kind of have to flip the script here a little bit. Um, we can obviously talk about these successes all day long, but challenges had to have impacted your journey as well. They make us who we are, right? So um, what would you say is one of the biggest lessons you learned that had a huge shape, uh, a huge impact on shaping where the company is today? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. The biggest lesson, um, and it took us many years to learn this, is I can't uh, wait to hear this. the word <laughs> no. The word no. Because oh. um, as you start growing, you will, uh, people will always present opportunities to you, some air quote opportunities. Um, and, you know, when you're growing and you're really scrappy and you're self-financing the way we were, sometimes you feel like you can't say no to an opportunity. But then in retrospect, you're like, wow, I, that was not great for me to say. Either it took uh, attention away from other areas of the company that we needed to be focusing on. Um, and so ultimately it didn't expand the brand the way it should have. Um, and so I think that's the really important thing is learn the power of the word no. And I, I would say, I agree with that. And I would say um, flexibility of vision, not flexibility of values, but flexibility of vision. Um, when we started Beekman, it was a, a full multi-category uh, lifestyle brand, and we were in many different categories. And as we grew, we saw that our our beauty and skincare was quickly eclipsing um, everything we were doing. And so we, you know, we shifted and we said, okay, this is what's succeeding. This is our focus. This is where we need to to head. So we we had our vision, but we were able to steer it. 
Wow, I love that. By the way, the power of no is something that I think we can all learn in our lives, in our careers, and in our personal lives. That's something that I am trying to figure out as we speak. So. I mean, I tell, I tell Brent no, like, probably <laughs> sometimes a day. <laughs> He's mastered it. I'm like, no. But, but, you know, you know, we talk about kindness so much in our, in our company, and yeah. no is a really yeah. kind thing to do because yeah. if, if kind you, doesn't mean nice right right well and if you learn to say no you are saving a lot of people a lot of effort and a lot of wasted time and a lot of wasted resources so right. learning how to say no in the appropriate circumstances it's is kind. a really kind thing to do yeah i think that's huge what a, what a great lesson thank you for that um and, and also like you said kind of honing uh, your, what your mission is, what, what you're going to focus on. I think that's so also so important. We hear that a ton, you know, from, from some of our customers who started really, really big and they found that one area where they could really succeed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. great, great entrepreneurial lessons um, and business lessons in general. Yeah. And I think, you know, to the, Josh's point about that focusing, listen to your customer mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, our passions are many things, skin care, food, gardening, you know, many yeah. things. But the customer was saying, we really love what you're doing in skincare and beauty. And it just took us a while to really hear that from them. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Um, now, when you look back on this whole journey, what are you most proud of? Oh, definitely the Beekman neighborhood um, mm -hmm. of, um, of our customers, um, because we can always count on them to answer questions from other people in the neighborhood. We, um, we rely on them to spread the kindness, which is what we call when someone gifts Beekman or talks about Beekman. Um, so I think building that community and, you know, we still get handwritten letters. We get crafts that people made inspired by Beekman literally every week, hundreds of pieces of mail. Mm -hmm. And then we use social media to then spread that message. So we get to read those letters out loud. We show the, like this, these just came in yesterday. Actually, like all of these ca handwritten cards oh and letters. Gosh. And this is what I love. This is how you can, this is how tightened in our community is. You can send, you can send a letter through the mail to Beekman 1802, Sharon Springs, New York, no address, no names or anything. And it gets to us. I love it. Well, that's and I think that that's that's the thing that one of the things that I'm most proud of is that we've been able to grow a you know multi multi million dollar company in a rural area, economically challenged rural area, um, and and keep this company here and keep it growing as as we expand. And I think in this day and age, when more people are working from home, I think it actually entrepreneurialism can solve a lot of the challenges of rural and and economically challenged areas. One one thousand percent. That's another great point. You know, as we've moved away through the last couple of years, we've moved out of cities into you know more suburban and rural neighborhoods. This is where that entrepreneurial spirit, where that um, you know creativity, that innovation can really, really um, flourish and and build opportunities. Um, and have so, more impact. Yeah. Ex and have a huge impact. Exactly. Just like just like you guys have. Um, OK, I have some stuff coming in here from the audience, so I really need to make sure I shout out. Um, Yash says hello from Minnesota. Christine says hi from beautiful Northeast Ohio. Okay. Easton says, hey, from Santa Monica, California. And that's a selfish plug because that is my boyfriend. Good boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael says hello from Olone, Olone Land in San Francisco Bay Area. Oh. Oakland, California, Oracle Pride Employee Network lead who appreciates y'all having this session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael, for tuning in. Kerman says hello from Ashland, Oregon. Hi, Kerman. Susie from LA. Kerman chimed in saying, I'm living for Kendall's manicure. This yes. is my, my pride it manicure. So so. <laughs> <laughs> Going strong still, like three weeks later. Um, David says, coming you coming to you from Boone, Carolina, de North Bay. I think that's North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in North Carolina, so I'm very familiar with Boone. Oh, amazing. Well, David has a question we'll get to at the end. A couple questions also coming in from Ian and a few others, so we will get to all of those questions. Please keep shouting out to us. Please keep asking your questions. We are definitely going to make time to get to them in a few minutes here. Um, but first, kind of going back to what you guys are, are really proud of, um, I've been and really your journey in general. I've been hearing that in all of this, community has really been at the center and a huge, 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 huge part of Beacon 1802 and your story. Um, and it's a huge part of Pride. Mm -hmm. What are you two 
doing right as leaders to really instill this sense of community across the company, your employees, partners, products, no matter how big you grow, like you said, a multi-million dollar company, no matter how big you've grown, you really still keep that intact. Um, I think for us, um, just leading by example um, and always treating our employees with kindness, treating each neighbor, each customer with kindness. Um, and that's reflected in, in you know, not only in the products, like if you read down our ingredient list on every product, kindness is listed as an ingredient on the product. Um, and, you know, just by living out our values. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, we, that's how we do it. We, we didn't just bring these letters in here, you know, for the thing, we were actually answering our mail um, sent, in, sent in from our neighbors. So like keeping that community is about fostering community and, and that was one of the reasons we started using the word neighbor um, for our customers from day one, because it helps our team think of our customers differently. They don't think of Beekman as a transactional place with a customer and a, and a seller. Um, mm -hmm. They think of it as a community place, as neighbors, you know, and, and our customer service department is called a neighbor service department. So making sure that our team feels like they are part of the same community that our customers are, that it's not an adversarial or you know transactional yeah. relationship i think that was the key for us it's great um and in creating that community you really have to build a culture of inclusion and equality right within your own doors yep. um what advice can you share with other business leaders on how to create a more inclusive environment okay first of all don't think of dei as a checkbox think of it as your main competitive strategy um with America just naturally becoming more more diverse, you your customers are coming from so many more different places, so many more different um, cultural touch points um, than ever before. So if your team doesn't exactly reflect that, you're missing out on sales. I mean, it's it really is down to that. DEI used to be this nice thing like, oh, I'm a socially progressive company, and so we should do this. Now it's it's a mandatory business strategy. So start thinking of it that way. When you're recruiting, think of it. I have to recruit um, uh, under my DEI umbrella. I have to recruit that way or I won't succeed. It's really right. true. And actually the pandemic made that easier than ever because of so many new work from home policies, um, you know, hiring across, you know, many different um, diverse populations has become easier than ever. And so really lean into that, um, the, that flexible workspace um, that has come out the pandemic to, to increase your DI issues. You know, we are in a very rural location. We didn't historically have the most diverse um, population geographically around us to hire from. Uh, and now we are about 18 um, percent um, of our staff is um, from minority communities, minority representation. So if our company can do it, other companies can do it. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, again, going back to that, that kind of vein of innovation, you know, the more diverse your workforce, the more diverse thoughts, the more diverse ideas, um, you know, the better and better and better your company will become. Um, that's just what, that's just I, what works. <laughs> I want to add 100% of our executive team, 100% across is a female or a minority. Wow. So like, that was, to me, that was a really proud accomplishment. Yeah, that's huge. Um, now, kind of speaking of hiring, how do you go about recruiting top talent for Beekman 1802? Um, well, you know, I think for us, we have the advantage of um, being this really kind company. Mm -hmm. And so people tend to seek us out, mm -hmm. uh, particularly, you know, people who um, are interested in kind of a startup culture and a culture that's more creative with mm -hmm. less restrictions than a really large company. Um, what we find is that we get um, inbound inquiries from people who are like, you know what, I've done the big company experience. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want that anymore. It's not the right lifestyle for me. So I want to take those skills that I learned in those big companies and I want to apply them to an up and coming company. And so we get a lot of inbound um, requests for positions at all levels. Yeah. And I think one of the ways we accomplished that was and this is a lesson learned, 
you know, we're a beauty company based in Sharon Springs, New York. You know, most beauty companies are in New York City or, or L.A. or Paris or wherever. And for a long time, we, we weren't um, we weren't very involved in the beauty industry. We, we were doing our own thing. We were growing. We were succeeding. And then we started, um, you know, going to more conferences, doing more industry events and, and getting our, ourselves out there more. And that's helped people come to us. So, yeah. And so when those people come to you, how do you ensure that you're actually hiring the right employees or even beyond that, like picking the right partners that fit within this culture and this mission, um, you know, this culture of kindness and, and that mission that you've set forth, how do you make sure that they, that they're right for that, that they are going to continue to improve upon that? Uh, well, we can always, I think, you know, we can always tell from the very first interview, whether people share the same ethos of the company. And there have been times when people were very well qualified from a technical standpoint, but we didn't think that emotionally they were the right ethos of the company. Um, those are the ones that are always the hardest to turn down. You're like, oh, you're so skilled at what you do, but you just don't fit with the, the personality of the company. And on the flip side, we had, you know, we've had many people who are very kind and very nice, but maybe didn't have the the um, competitive um, drive. So, it's, yeah, it was really finding that that balance of our values, kindness, but still being competitive. And like, if you would hit that sweet spot, it was there right for us. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of, again, going to, switch this um you both had successful careers before founding beekman 1802 what should top talent look for in their employers especially around diversity and inclusion um i would say when you're talking you know if you're in a, a job interview particularly in this day and age when it's you know um it's uh, into into the uh employees um lap yeah. is um, ask what is that employer going to do for you? Not just from a monetary standpoint or a benefit standpoint, but how is that employer going to um, help develop you as an individual? Um, because every great company at this in this day and age should be focusing on developing talent. And if you develop that talent, um, they're going to stick with you. If you develop that talent and raise them up through the company, they're going to stick with you. So ask that employer, how are you going to develop me and make me better? Yeah. Yeah. And I would say just uh, make sure that, that uh, your, whoever you're interviewing with is going to respect the differences you're bringing to the table, not, not the, you know, the industry standards that you're bringing to the table, what the different things you're bringing to the table. Right. Again, if they're, if, if, if they're not looking at you as a strategic advantage, as a competitive advantage because of your differences, it's not going to succeed for you or for them. Agreed. I love that. Um, okay, last question for me here, and then I'm going to open it up to the audience. But products aside, even though you have amazing products, um, products aside, you two as human beings and as leaders are a big factor in the success and the cult following around Beekman 1802. What impact do you hope to leave on the world of entrepreneurialism and beyond? Um, I, I, I'll speak for myself. I don't know if I can't speak for Josh, but I think. Um, well, you always, you always try. <laughs> well, <laughs> those of you who don't know, we're married too. So it's not that we're just family, we're married. Um, but the, um, I would say ultimately we want to be known as a company that grew into a global company based on kindness and that we never um, ever in the history of our company, either before or in the future, have ever had to do someone wrong or left someone in a worse position having worked with Beekman than they were when they began working with Beekman. Um, whether it's a, a, a retail partner, whether it's an employee, whether it's a customer, um, as long as every relationship we've had has left somebody better that's 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 the competitive i mean a win-win is a win-win yeah love that um let's let's spread that that is uh that is a strategy i think everybody everybody should have um again in life in career as an entrepreneur or business leader um leave people around you better than what they were before they met you love that um josh and brent okay we do have some questions and some more shout outs coming in from the audience we did, Ron says, um, Israel is also here. Hello, Ron and Israel. We have 
Flavia in Brazil and Lynn in Crawfordville, Florida. Hello, everyone. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And again, we do have some um, questions coming through. So uh, David from North Carolina actually asks, um, and speaking of pride, how did Beekman 1802 honor pride this year? I happen to know because yeah. I follow you guys on social, but. <laughs> well, um, for the past several years, we have partnered with the Alley Forney Center um, and the Alley Forney Center, um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is an organization that develops programming and outreach to um, LGBTQIA plus youth who are homeless as a result of their decision to, you know, live their, 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 their lives. Um, and so um, what we do every year is we take one of our hero products um, and um, create a special version of that product and 100% of the proceeds of that version of the product go to the Alley Forney Center. Um, and so that's, you know, for, as a company, that's a really big commitment for us to, to take our hero mm -hmm. skew and give mm -hmm. all of the proceeds to, um, to the charity. And so this year, um, it, it was our Bloom Cream, which is our number one selling um, moisturizer, probiotic moisturizer. And we had um, one of our influencers um, design the box uh, so they took our gingham and made it into the rainbow version. Um, and you also get our rainbow goatee. Goatee is our ambassador for kindness. So you get the rainbow goatee pin. Um, but we do that every year. We think Alley Forney is a fantastic organization. Mm -hmm. And we just um, applaud everything that they do. Of course, not just during Pride Month, but throughout the year. Because, you know, if you can teach, if you can help the youth, get them to be proud of their who they are, help them in their circumstances. Yeah, the tools they need. That's the future. That yeah. is the future. I know. If only we could just let everybody live in joy and pride of who they are authentically. What a better place this world would be. So mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, Ian coming in here with a hot question that I'm not sure. It's like I feel like this is going to be a difficult one, but what are your favorite Beekman 1802 products? And isn't it like picking a favorite kid? I don't know. So. Oh, yeah. <sighs> oh gosh, it is. Oh, gosh. And it actually changes day by day. Um, but I would say probably the very first thing we ever made, um, the, the original bar of soap, I, I still remember hand wrapping those bars of soap. Our original tagline was soap for sensitive people, not just, not just sensitive skin, but people yeah. who are empaths and people who are sensitive about what's going on in the world around them. And I'm going to say whatever the next product is, because oh. we have so much fun, wow. There's so much new science and research coming out that like everything that we're working on, I'm like, I can't wait to have it. That was an entrepreneurial answer right there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, I love that. Um, okay, and then another question coming in here from Susie. You mentioned this um, at the beginning about kind of what was happening in your year. And Su Susie says, you need to tell us about the Bridgerton Beekman 1802 collaboration. How did this come about and what do we all need to know? Oh, great. Yes. Um, well, we, um, for some of you may know that several years ago, we did a, um, a collaboration with Schitt's Creek. Uh, mm -hmm. We did a whole product line based around the Rose Apothecary and it was super fun and they were great to work with. And um, as a result of that collaboration, um, which Netflix saw, they said, oh, would you like to do something with Bridgerton for the second season when it launches? And of course, we're fans of Bridgerton. It was one of those survival shows that got you through the pandemic, you know, and um, and and we love even more than just the great show and storytelling was how Shonda Land, the producers of the show, um, actually looked at things like DEI and like, how are we going to get representation into this show in a way that it hasn't been in mainstream media? So whether it was, you know, the colorblind casting yes. um, or whether yeah. even in second season, they cast a um, an out gay male actor to play the leading straight romance lead in the show. I mean, these are really they should be, but yeah. they're, they're maverick ways of thinking about what is entertainment and how, you know, why these things are important when we're talking about entertainment. And so we created this whole collection with them. Um, and not only did we use it as inspiration for the collection, but we thought, wow, this was very futuristic storytelling that they were doing, even though it's set in the Regency period. And so in every product that we create with them, um, not only is it beautiful packaging and things like that, and very efficacious product, but we actually incorporated an augmented reality component into every package, um, which is like an Easter egg. So that when that fan gets the product home, 
they can actually become immersed in the world of Bridgerton through the augmented reality component of the packaging. And we even um, extended that to our kindness shop in Sharon Springs. So if you come to Sharon Springs and, and stand in front of the store and, and use the AI. AR. Uh, I'm sorry, AR, AR filter. The yeah. entire front of the store blossoms in wisteria and you're in oh, the Bridgerton. That is so cool. What an, uh, I mean, that's an awesome collaboration. I love, we were on and we talked about the Schitt's Creek collaboration when we were on last time, which I still think the Rose Apothecary was somehow built off of the Beekman 18. I think there's a Reddit, like I think there's a subreddit on it <laughs> uh, that I probably dove into. I am actually re-watching Schitt's Creek right now um, for the second time. So I love it. But that, the Bridget, that sounds amazing. That experience sounds amazing. We have left a link in um, in this post for you guys to go check out. Go look at the first comment in this post. We have left a link to Beekman1802.com so you guys can go check out some of these products, check out their Pride product, check out some of the Bridgerton stuff. Um, really amazing things you have going on here. And we are just so grateful for you joining us again. This was an awesome conversation. And we look forward to whatever's going to come, all the coolness that's to come in the future. So thanks again, you two. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And for all those entrepreneurs out there, remember, if we go into a recession, maybe we're already in one, you can still build something amazing, even in times that may be coming. Yes. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for that. And thank you to everyone for tuning in again. Please go check out Beekman 1802. Really great stuff there. And if you're not already, make sure you give us a follow or subscribe for more content just like this, which is happening all the time. And we will see you soon. Bye.